Hi handsome and welcome to my 25th video. Stop me if you heard this before. You find this MMO called Black Desert Online. You like the combat, you like the graphics, the life skilling systems, etc. You tell your friends about this game and you want them to join in on the fun. But what do you hear from them as a reply is... No, that game is pay to win. What follows is you searching up is video pay to win on YouTube, where you are peppered with people saying it is or it isn't, some spending thousands of dollars on the game to prove a point one way or the other. Some of these videos are by people who don't even play the game or played it back in the day, so the new videos will be full of content creators saying that the game is not as pay to win now as it was before, which doesn't answer the question either. At the end of the day, it is a mess. And it is a mess somewhat specific to BDO. With other MMOs, at least from what I can see, the sentiment usually leads one way or the other. Either the game is pay to win beyond a shadow of a doubt and you will hardly find any defenders, or you will hardly find anyone even bring up pay to win with that game at all. BDO has both sides putting their opinions out there and this is why I decided to put my opinion out there as well. Before we can begin talking about BDO's pay to winness, we need to know what pay to win really means. According to Cambridge Dictionary, pay to win is involving or relating to the practice of paying to get weapons, abilities, etc. that give you an advantage over players who do not spend money. So now we know, BDO is pay to win. And so is every other MMO with a cash shot. As we can see, this isn't helping anyone. Now, the problem with the term pay to win is in the name itself. Everyone has a different idea of what winning means, which leads to people on the defense saying pedantically, well, you are not winning anything, so it's not pay to win. And the people on the other side deciding that you win simply by doing something better than the other person. So yes, it is pay to win. Personally, terms like pay for convenience or pay to skip or even pay for advantage, while maybe not as catchy, work to define a game's monetization system far better than the term pay to win can. We also need to talk about what the term pay to win represents, because what it used to stand for does not really exist in the MMO landscape anymore. No longer can you just spend cash to buy the best gear a game has to offer, or even gear that would be better than any other gear obtained without paying real cash money. Nowadays, it really is more about those conveniences and small advantages, which adds to the further confusion when you want to decide what winning really means. Well, the final problem is again in the term itself. In a way, the people saying that you are not winning anything are correct because video games are not a competition. There are no winners or losers, there are just players. Of course, competitive games do exist, but MMOs are not really that anymore. Even BDO, the former king of open world PvP, is now nothing else but a PvE grindfest where you watch the numbers go up, where most of PvP is equalized or somehow capped, so that even if you had better gear, it wouldn't really matter. This also goes without saying, but at the end of the day, video games are a form of entertainment. What matters here is that you enjoy your experience, no matter how much or how little you decide to spend. We don't really play games to win anyway, do we? We play them mostly to relax, to have fun, or even to just spend time with our friends we can't otherwise see or talk to. But enough about words. Let's talk about the stigma that pay to win leaves on BDO and other MMOs like it. I will segment the rest of this video into smaller arguments where I won't talk just about why BDO's pay to win is not as bad as it may seem, but also that pay to win in itself nowadays isn't what it used to be. With that said, let's talk about what pay to win actually is. Just like any other monetization model, pay to win can be used well or poorly. I think the main problem with the negative reception pay to win gets has a lot to do with the way that different pay to win elements are pushed on the player, rather than just the sheer existence of them. Pop up ads taking up the entire screen, telling you to buy XYZ thing the moment you start the game, main quest designed to have you open the in game store, locking content behind paywalls, or preying on people with gambling addictions and poor self control are just some of the many ways nefarious developers can abuse the system for maximum profit. This is more of a problem with the developers than the monetization model as a whole though. For an example of what I mean by this, let's take a look at another monetization practice. DLCs. 
are DLCs bad on their own? I'm going to guess most of you will say no. But there is a huge gap between the level of DLCs you get for games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Elden Ring and DLCs you get for The Sims 4. I think we can all agree on that. Another monetization model that a lot of people want in MMOs, provided that they want one at all, is the cosmetics only model. You already know where I am going with this, so I think we can all agree that nobody wants a $500 League of Legends Ahri skin or any of the overpriced heirloom skins in Apex Legends. Even monetization systems that might be worse received in general follow this rule by the way. Just compare the reception of loot boxes in the games that popularize them, those being CSGO and the original Overwatch, to the reception of loot boxes in the release version of Star Wars Battlefront 2. All of this is begging the question, how do we know whether a pay to win model in a given MMO is good or not? And I think we already have this answered. The good pay to win models are the ones that do not get called pay to win. So now that we know that every monetization model can be used poorly and with predatory intentions, let's circle back to why it might be that pay to win gets more flag from the community than other models. And I believe I might have the answer. It is because... One big problem with the reception of pay to win in general is that it has been tainted by the mobile market. Mobile games with pay to win are almost always free and their pay to win elements tend to be the most predatory of them all. The fact that bad MMOs are also more likely to be pay to win doesn't help the pay to win stigma either. Whenever a game starts to fail financially, very few companies have the budget and time to work on and fix the problem. Since MMOs require a constant money flow to operate and these games do not have large enough player bases to support them with just a subscription or a box price and said monetization models might serve as yet another barrier to entry for potential new players which these games really need, these games have to try to get money from their existing audience. This means that the pay to win model is tied to a lot of failing or even just bad MMOs and therefore leading people to the idea that these games were bad because they were pay to win or even that it was the pay to win which led to their deaths. On the other hand, there definitely exists a lot of greedy corporations that intentionally design their games with predatory pay to win in mind. You probably already know some of these. Companies like Gameforge and Gamego, often publishers that will offer to take over these struggling games only to pump the games full of pay to win elements and microtransactions looking to make a quick buck before the game eventually shuts down. And because of this, the next point that I want to talk about happens. Because so many MMOs use the pay to win monetization model so poorly and so predatorily, the term itself has become a pejorative. People will call MMOs pay to win in order to insult them. This is also why some MMOs with 100% undeniable pay to win elements will have defenders saying that their MMO is not pay to win because to admit that it is would for some reason in their eyes admit that the game is bad. Which is simply not the case, these things are not one and the same. Just to use a game other than BDO as an example, let's look at Guild Wars 2. This game is published by NCSoft. It has, like I said, 100% undeniable pay to win elements. It sells storage and inventory space, loot boxes, fast travel, EXP boosters, character slots, revive orbs, level boosts, Mates, there is just so much of it. You can even buy the in-game currency with real cash money. I think this is like the definition of pay to win. Yet, you will have defenders of Guild Wars 2 telling you over and over and over again that the game is not pay to win. Clearly, there exists a bias to where you cannot accept your favorite MMO as pay to win because in some way we as an MMO community has decided that pay to win means bad and a game with pay to win is a bad game. We also see this with new titles coming into the MMO genre by the way where they promise that they will not be pay to win and for some reason this is met with applause and people shouting the name to the heaven. Only for the game to introduce pay to win elements when money gets tight and people 
leaving the game for good because now it's pay to win, so now it's a bad game. Alright, so now that we know that pay to win is just a monetization model, and that by itself it's not as bad as some people will have you to believe, let's look at what those people want from MMO monetization instead. Because what they want is honestly a utopia. It simply does not exist. The idea that MMOs should be just subscription based, or even worse, only have a box price and no other way of monetization, is not only outdated, it is also very naive. Let's be real. Developing MMOs is extremely expensive. You need a lot of people working around the clock not only to make sure that the game is running at all times, but also making sure that the people in those MMOs have stuff to do. MMOs need to develop content faster than any other video game genre in existence, and they need to develop the content faster than ever before. Some of you who played Classic World of Warcraft may remember this statistic, but in the official Classic World of Warcraft release in 2004, it took people 154 days to clear the first raid, that being Molten Core. The most recent raid in World of Warcraft, that being Dragon's Fight Amir Drasil, in comparison, took 13 days to clear for the first time. On Mythic difficulty, which is much harder than Molten Core ever was. We consume content faster than ever before and we are at a point where if an MMO doesn't release enough content in a given amount of time, we pronounce that MMO as dead. But where do you think all of this content comes from? These developers are not just making it out of the goodness of their own hearts. We live in capitalism, so everyone wants to make money. And this cash shop allows companies to hire more people to make more content faster. I think it is pretty obvious that if the three biggest MMOs in our current time, those being Final Fantasy XIV, World of Warcraft and RuneScape, all have cash shops on top of a subscription, and in the case of the first two MMOs, also on top of a box price, we cannot expect other MMOs to not have them. Obviously, greed plays a part in this as well. I am sure that Square Enix and Blizzard both profit big time from the inclusion of these shops. And I am also pretty sure that just like most things in life, it's not just black and white. Greed is not the only reason for the inclusion of these shops. And even if it was all greed, we cannot selectively declare one company to be greedy for its inclusion of pay to win elements, while other companies are free to nickel and dime us as much as they want without any repercussions. All of this leads me to the main question I want every single one of you watching to ask yourselves. I think that the main problem behind basically this entire video is the way we ask the question. By asking, is this MMO pay to win, we expect a yes or no answer. This then creates a dichotomy between these games. The pay to win games are seen as bad and the non pay to win games are seen as good. This then has these trickle down effects where games with blatant pay to win elements are said to be non pay to win, while other games with arguably similar elements get dragged through the mud. What we should do instead is, first and foremost, be honest with ourselves. Accept that these pay to win elements exist in all of our favorite MMOs. And after this, we need to rephrase the question. No longer shall we ask, is this MMO pay to win? But instead, we should ask, what pay to win elements does this MMO have? Or even, how pay to win is this MMO compared to others in the genre? This way, we will be able to eradicate these conflicting views on certain MMOs such as BDO. Josh Strive Hayes made a video talking about the different levels of pay to win and I do think that the video is a great start to finally turn the stigma around where we no longer see pay to win as black or white but as a spectrum. And for those of you who still refuse to see my point of view, who are hellbent on calling BDO or any other MMO with pay to win bad and swearing on your parents graves that you will never touch a pay to win game, let me ask you my final question. Why does it matter to you? Alright handsome, that is it for today's video. I don't know why I am on such a brigade to make everyone watching my videos upset, but I still hope you enjoyed this one. There is more that I want to say on this topic, but this video is long enough as it is, so maybe I will make a follow up. Next video should still be on my Aaron Pen series. We have had some changes to the plan recently, so do stay tuned to that. Do tell me if you think video is pay to win or not. Remember to like and subscribe. Join my discord if you want to talk to me more on a regular basis. And enjoy your grind.